Atlanta Motor Speedway has been on the NASCAR stage for over five decades. And for the majority of those years, it was the final race of the season, opening it up to some of the best points battles in history. Rusty Wallace wins the Winston Cup. Jeff Gordon wins the 1997 NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. No race in Atlanta's history, though, is more prominent than the 1992 Hooters 500. Folks, we are entering one of the most exciting races ever in Winston Cup racing. Six drivers with a chance to win the championship, the closest battle in NASCAR history. But let's not forget, before we get into the points battle, before we crown a champion, let's send off a champion. This would be Richard Petty's final start. Let's take a look in reverse from the 1992 Hooters 500. There's the checkered flag for Allen. He's the champion for 92. The cars are warming up on pit lane, and in just a moment, we'll be moving out onto the racetrack. Heading into the race, Davey Allison had the championship lead. Driver, owner, Alan Kowicki, only 30 points behind. Bill Elliott, that's right, million dollar Bill, 40 points behind. Harry Gant, Kyle Petty, and Mark Martin rounded out the six. The green flag waves, and the Hooters 500 is underway. Unfortunately for Mark Martin, engine trouble sidelined his chance to make the climb to be a champion. And Mark Martin is slowing here on the main straightaway. Mark's Valvoline Ford is off the pace dramatically. Kyle Petty, Harry Gant just didn't seem to have the cars this day. But Allison, Kowicki, Elliott, all front runners. Heading in as the leader, Davey Allison had to be the favorite. He had a good car, but unfortunately an accident on the front stretch collects the 28. Oh, oh, look crash. out! Davey Allison is in the crash pod! As he slides to a rest on the inside wall, it's clear too much damage to continue. This accident will end Davey's chance for a championship. We didn't get it, so we'll just go back and we'll get ready for next year and we'll come out and try again. It just wasn't meant to be. Davey's accident clears the way. Bill Elliott, Alan Kowicki. The duel for a championship. It was Bill Elliott's race. It became clear as the race wound down, a green flag pit stop would be required. Who could figure out fuel mileage? Who could figure out the pit stop? Who could lead the most laps? Now stop. This is 1992, a different point system. Five points for leading a lap. Five more points for leading the most. Who would dream that five points over an entire season would be the difference in a championship. Well, on this day, Alan Kowicki knew that he probably would be beat by Bill Elliott, but Alan knew if he could lead the most laps or at least lead as many as Bill, that would take away those five bonus points and he had a chance to be a champion. Pit stops will be occurring before too long. They must pit for gas to have enough to go the distance. As the laps wore down, the calculators heated up. How much fuel, how much time on pit road, and more importantly, how many laps could you lead? And he let Bill go by, and yep. now we'll watch for Alan Kowicki to make it down pit road, and how long it will take him to get gas only. Drama playing out here in the final laps at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Alan does the math, Bill's team does the math. After Allen's pit stop, a splash of gas, he returns to the racetrack. Less than four seconds for fuel. Man, could he have gotten enough fuel in that car in three and a half seconds? Well, I wonder about that, Jerry. I tell you, the can still looks awfully heavy. Boy, wouldn't that be something to lose it on about a second and a half fuel? So they just put the can back up, they probably don't even want to know. <laughs> Everything seems okay, but a bit of panic in the seventh pit. Over the radio, they tell Alan, you might have to save some gas. We're not sure we have enough. Bill Elliott heads down pit road in the Budweiser for Thunderbird. This could decide the Winston Cup championship. One critical error by Bill Elliott could be the difference maker. As he pits under green, assuming everything will be fine, Terry Labonte stays on the racetrack. No one hears this story. Terry Labonte leads one lap the one lap that Bill Elliott needed to lead the most. Bill Elliott returns to the track, continuing to control the race. It's his race to lose and he won't. He wins that day. Bill Elliott comes off the fourth corner. He wins the Hooters 500. But for Allen, Allen had to finish in third or better. 
the math of who was going to lead the most laps gave him a buffer that in the end, Kawicki didn't lead. He finished second to Bill Elliott. While it wasn't the top step of the podium or victory lane for the race win, it was enough to become the 1992 NASCAR champion. But Alan Kowicki is coming off of corner number four, knowing that he's winning the championship. There's the checkered flag for Alan. He's the champion for 92. Not only was Alan Kowicki a champion, but Alan was a champion his own way. Driver, owner, combination as a NASCAR champion. Alan owned his own team, raced his own way, and did everything by his book. Unfortunately, in 1993, tragedy struck, and Alan was unable to defend his title. With a career ended short, Allen's legacy continues on as a NASCAR Hall of Famer. The fan base loved him, and racers around the world loved him, not just as a champion, but as a champion who found the top step in the Premier Series doing things his own way. There'll be other races, but this championship's what I wanted, and I just, you know, thank God for the fortune to, to be here and to be in America and compete on the Winston Cup circuit. Man, when I moved down south years ago, this was my dream. I came in a pickup truck and a trailer, and I want to thank all the people that along the way in ASA and everywhere in my career have helped me, and uh, just a storybook ending, having Hooter sponsor the race, and my dad's here, and uh, just, just really wonderful.